What's going on, folks? Welcome back, and I uh, hope you had a good weekend. Listen, there was a lot going on this weekend. I'm sure you've heard a lot of geopolitical turmoil. Um, Iran retaliated, and look, we talked about this on my channel before. I don't want to get too much into the politics, but Israel attacked the Iranian embassy in Syria. That was last week, or was it the week before? Anyway, I think it was last week. Anyway, reta uh, Iran retaliated this weekend uh, with a series of bombardment, and uh, vast majority of them, thankfully, were shot down. Uh, vast majority of the drones and the missiles that were uh, shot towards Israel were shot down. As far as I'm concerned, there weren't any civilian casualties uh, as of right now. So hopefully it remains that way. Hopefully it doesn't escalate more. But uh, I don't know, man. It's it's hard to tell. This uh, this recent episode of Middle Eastern violence just keeps escalating and I'm, I'm not sure if there's going to be a lid on top of it anytime soon. However, um, like I said, I don't want to get too much into the politics, but I keep going back to the chart that I've shared with you previously as well, is that look, any anytime there's a recession, a pullback, a correction, whatever you want to call it in the market, there's one of three things happening. Right? And the severity of that correction is going to be determined, uh, how, determined by how many of those things are happening and how bad is it, right? There's going to be high interest rates, which we have currently. Unemployment, okay, unemployment seems like it's in check. And then something globally, right? This geopolitical turmoil that's going on right now. I mean, it's, it, it, what eventually will end up happening if this continues is that oil prices will go up. Right, that's going to cause inflation to go up, and inflation goes up. They can't reduce interest rates, and if interest rates don't come down, there's a higher risk of a recession. So it kind of all goes full circle, right? There's already a huge uh, barrier in place when it comes to shipments through the Red Sea, right? So stuff that's coming in from China, from Asia, going to Europe, and even coming to um, North America to some degree, those shipments are being hindered. Right? There's an impediment in place at the moment because of all this turmoil and violence that's going on. That's only going to get worse if this continues. Right, Once again, that's going to lead to inflation. Once again, that's going to lead to earnings being affected uh, for a lot of companies. So we'll, we'll keep an eye on this. We'll hopefully, hopefully this doesn't get worse than it already is. But if I'm looking at that chart and I'm checking those boxes, I'm like high interest rates, a lot of global turmoil. Something's got to give, right? As of today, as of today, look, coming into this morning, I was afraid. I thought there was going to be a bloodbath. But the markets actually handle the news relatively well. Uh, there's some red. Tesla is down quite a bit. We're going to talk about Tesla today. There's a video uh, from CNBC interview with uh, Tom, I forget his last name, Narayan. By the way, I've never met a brown person named Tom. And uh, I, I'm not I'm not hating on it. I'm just saying I'd love to meet him. Uh, but he's an analyst that covers Tesla. So uh, we're going to get into that interview. You're going to get my reaction on that. And uh, let's get into it. Tesla will now avoid a month long trial around its self-driving technology just months ahead of its robo taxi launch, which Musk says is coming on August 8th. In the meantime, Tesla co-founder and former CEO Martin Eberhard told investors at an HSBC summit in Hong Kong overnight that he is amazed in his words that Tesla gets away with rolling out autonomous driving, given its history of fatal accidents. Again, those weren't his words on this. Tesla's co-founder said this? Wow. Because the stock was up about five. I wonder why he's so upset. Five percent, just on the idea that robo-taxis ta robo are coming in August, uh, and that's something that we're going to be talking about right now. Joining us to discuss this is Tom Narayan, who is a global autos analyst at RBC Capital Markets. Uh, Tom, thanks for coming in today. So uh, this was... Pretty big news as far as the market was concerned. The idea of these robo taxis actually having a date. Yeah, definitely. I think it was a surprise, but I don't think it was a surprise for investors who are long Tesla stock, or certainly sell side analysts who have buy ratings on it. It's about sixty percent of my valuation, and has been for over a year. Is robo taxis, or really, it's autonomy. autonomy. So that includes FSD to some extent. Right. Um, so yeah, I, I don't think it was total well, self driving for those uninitiated on the FSD. Right, right, just right. Like so just to give you a little bit of summary so far, basically they're talking about the robo taxi. It's going to be introduced in August, um, the Tesla robo taxi, right? And a lot of that is driven by the FSD. It's the autonomous driving uh, technology that Tesla has been working on for years now, right? So this analyst says that, and we've talked about this before. It's like it doesn't the current even the current reduced price for Tesla stock doesn't make any sense if you're just looking at it from a standpoint of a car company. It's 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 very expensive as a car company, but sixty percent of his value 
valuation is based off of, and I forget what his price target was actually. I was looking at this uh, earlier. I, I, it's, I think it's the mid 200s, uh, and this is a 12 month price target. But he's saying his valuation is based, 60% of that is based off of FSD and the robo taxi, all the other stuff that Tesla does, right? It's not just the fact that it's a car company. So let's get back into this. A level two plus assisted driving, and then robo taxi is completely level four drives it drives you completely. Um, <clears throat> the idea that it's coming in August does that hinge on that valuation too, or, or is this something that you could be a little flexible with that timeline? Because that's uh, that's been the knock before that uh, timelines yeah. are laid out and then not met. If that timeline's not met, do you still think the same thing about your? Yeah, fair enough. Like he, nobody's ever claimed Elon Musk is a punctual human being. I mean, he's August. Oh, August. I meant August of 2030. Oh, you meant this year? This is what Elon Musk does. So who knows if it's going to be August. Valuation call. Yeah, I do. I mean, my valuation is based on a 2040 year uh, revenue oh, wow. target. And then I discount that back and I apply a multiple there. It's similar to FSD, which is like a 2030, 2035. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it's August 8th, 2024, if it's next year, I mean, Robo taxis aren't going to be mainstream for a long while. Right. I, I do see why he's doing it. Where I mean, he's trying to highlight the value of, that this could bring. It's I mean, it's huge, right? But when do you think you can actually roll out on the streets? We have a robo taxi service in San Francisco with Cruise and Waymo, right? Mm -hmm. I don't think it's going to be in some big scale anytime soon. Right, but uh, the difference. So. We've talked about Waymo in uh, on my channel before, um, and there's also Cruise. So what they're doing is they're running these trials in in, in different cities. And San Francisco seems to be the hot spot where they start the uh, the trials. Uh, Waymo now is also in LA. I think I'm not sure if the Robo Taxi is, and I'm not sure if Cruise is here in LA. But they're in, they're in a few different cities. I think Austin is one of them. Phoenix, San Francisco. So the Robo Taxis currently are operational in San Francisco. It's like a trial run. Same with Waymo. Actually, Waymo started charging customers for the first time. Uh, I think I saw this uh, headline last week. So yeah, there's there's that. I mean, the difference, I, I, I'm curious if you agree with this. There is a view among those in the sort of engineering community that the reason why the Waymo um, and Cruise products work is because they use LiDAR right now. I, 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 you roll your eyes, but I'm just saying this is this is the whole yeah. thing. LiDAR, by the way, is effectively like a laser point at different places um, and gives you feedback about what's actually around you. Elon has decided he wants to do this solely with cameras uh, and without the radar. It's just a completely different approach. And as a result, there are some people who have a view that that is not fully ready for full prime time, you know, uh, full, full self-driving. Right. And that's the whole question. And so my... That, that's, that's an inaccurate view. If anybody has that view, that's an inaccurate view. First of all, listen, the, you've seen, you've, I've showed you a picture of what the Waymo vehicle looks like. It's got these crazy radars and cameras and all this stuff. It, it, it's, it's not even comforting. I wouldn't want to step into that because it looks like an unfinished product. First of all, uh, okay, if, uh, if somebody told me that that is an extremely, extremely safe vehicle to be in, way better than a Tesla, I would say, okay, sure then I would take that risk or I would prefer it over a Tesla. But that's not the case. That's not the case. We Waymos get into accidents all the time. Cruise gets into accidents as well. It's not, the, you have to compare apples to apples. You can't just say, oh, because this one's using a camera and that one's using a LiDAR is better. Well, there's no proof of that. Those vehicles also struggle with the same issues that Tesla struggles with, which is that one to two percent of like human interaction, where it's like you see a sign or you see somebody in the peripheral and you're like, oh, okay, I'm gonna. That's where those vehicles struggle because they're just not there yet. How? But they both have the same problem. I don't think they one is superior than the other. At least the data doesn't show that. My question to you is, do you believe that the robo-taxi version of the Tesla is running solely on cameras or is somehow is a shift in strategy? I, I could envision him pushing cameras initially. That's what FSD is based on. Could he capitulate on that and pivot towards using LiDAR eventually? Sure. Right. I mean, he's changed his mind before. I'm well, that's, a, that's a longer <laughs> yeah. delay, though, just in terms of getting things out on the street. If you're yeah, I mean, it could depend on where we have this product. Is it geofenced? What cities? Where is it, you know, initially? But at mass scale, we've heard Mobileye is a company that has uh, a product that's building with BW, the ID Buzz, that uses LiDAR. So, I mean, we'll see. It adds a layer of redundancy. Theoretically, it's not 100% necessary. Um, but yeah, it depends. You'll have to re-engineer cities to make this work in the future. 
You can't Reach drive. New cities have. Well, like imagine a robot taxi in the Champs Elysees right now, right? The Arc de Triomphe. It's impossible. So some cities. I mean, they're already doing that in New York, banning uh, private cars in certain streets. You have it on Oxford Street in London, where only certain types of vehicles, uh, some pedestrian areas, are are, are are separated. Cities are. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. But that's a good point. I mean, cities are constantly evolving. I mean, we never used to have bike lanes. You remember that? Now we have bike lanes all over the place, right? So yeah, cities are constantly evolving and driving rules are going to change. The, the, the lanes are going to be different. Um, yeah. They're going to change dramatically in the next several years or decades. Regulators are going to mandate that we use these things because they save lives. Uh, there, there have been problems along the way, though, as the former CEO and co-founder of Tesla pointed out. Look, there's surprises. It's not just Tesla that's had the issues with this. You've got GM kind of rolling out uh, their taxis with safety drivers now in it because of accidents they've run into, too. Um, grand scale, is it going to be safer eventually? GM uses the LiDAR technology. This is, goes to prove my point. They all have issues. So if you're going to call out Tesla for this cameras, well, you have to, you know, you can't just criticize one technology and not the other. Really? Probably. You have people who cause accidents all the time, but the liability factor is a huge one that is going to weigh on the manufacturers of all these cars. Sure, and that's that's become that's been the real overhang of the difficulty. BMW always says the moment uh, there's a headline that says BMW kills human, we're finished, right? But the reality is this saves literally it'll save two million lives a year. Right. hundred the million of being yeah. the one that kills sure. somebody. I mean, it's, it, there's still the legal framework you have to live within and the outrage of the family that loses someone. But what about the outrage of the <laughs> two other million people who die, right? So, oh, But let me ask you this. I've asked Elon this, this question specifically right. and personally, which is what is the politically palatable number in your mind in America of people who are going to die because the computer effectively is going to malfunction? That is actually the fundamental question. So right now, if you believe that 35, 40,000 people die in a vehicle every single year in America, if I told you that 5,000 people were going to die every year in America, but, it was, but a computer was going to do it because it malfunctioned, would you say that's, that's a good outcome? Would you say that's acceptable to you? I don't know. That's why I'm saying I, it, it's not so clear. If you got the number from 30 to 20, I don't think that would be politically palatable. right? right so if you got it from 30 to 200, that might be well, politically palatable. We know that 94% of, of, of accidents are caused by human error, right? So that number won't go from 30 to 5,000. It'll be a lot smaller. With a number of other industries that's happened, aviation, there were tons of crashes early on, trains, uh, and, and over time, those, yeah, that's, that's those reduce significantly. That's the logical view. Dr. Right. Right. Spock's view of all of this, but logic doesn't always prevail when you are sure. talking about, and when liability comes and there are deep pockets of a manufacturer behind it, that's yeah. what the lawyers will go after. And for the family that loses it, it's, you know, again, it's, I understand the Dr. Spock mentality, but that's not how things play out. Of reality. It'll, it'll be difficult early on, right? Yeah. And, and, and But we'll get there eventually. Plus, look at China. They're moving full steam ahead with sure. this, right? That's yeah, a Spocky view and it works. It is. And, and that's the way when you have centralized planning government, right. that, that, that can kind of roll into that. We'll get there. That, I, that last portion was, I didn't pause for a reason. I wanted to say stuff, but I didn't pause because that's a really good, informative conversation that they had the spark interview they're referring to is obviously like you know leave the emotions out of it if something makes sense and you know that the autonomous driving is safer than humans then you just do it even though it's a hard pill to swallow right because for humans it's like well how am i going to let a machine decide who gets to live and die right in the worst case scenario if a machine had to make a turn okay look just throwing this out there if imagine a situation where you're driving down the road and you see uh, a dog come out from, from, a, from your blind spot, runs out in the middle of the street. Okay, now you're going to swerve. But on this side, there's a child, a human child. As a human being, as a driver, you have to make a decision. You're going to kill the dog or the kid. Now you got a computer making that decision. Are we going to be comfortable with that? Are we, that's, that's a really good question. Are we going to be comfortable with that, right? The Spockian view would say, let the car decide because the car is going to make a better decision than the human because it doesn't have emotions. It's just analyzing data. But that's a, that's a really good question. I don't know. I don't know what that threshold is where people are comfortable with that decision being made by an autonomous vehicle, right? Although we know that 94%, I think that's the number he quoted, 94% of the accidents currently are caused by human error. If we can eliminate those 94% of accidents, we'd be a safer society, as, as far as car travel is concerned. But I don't know. I don't know how quickly we're, gonna, we're going to adapt to that scenario, right? The other thing they were talking about is, um, and I have, look, 
In terms of competition, let's just go back to that for a second, right? You got Waymo, you got Cruise, and you got FSD. In my opinion, as I'm thinking through this, who's going to have a better vehicle? Who's going to have the most capable technology five years from now? And by the way, we haven't even talked, I don't know, this this uh, video is a couple of days old, but I was reading up on this uh, over this weekend. FSD subscription is now available for $99. It used to be $199. I talked about this on this channel, that if they just made that a little cheaper, more people will be willing to sign up for it. We'll see if that works. But dem the demos are being pushed, right? Uh, but right when people pick up their new Tesla, they have to go to this demo thing. Well, they don't have to, but the they're being emphasized. Um, there's this free uh, demonstration or trials for the FSD. The subscription price is coming down to $99. has been cut in half, right? All this leads to what? More people signing up for FSD, more miles. And this is how AI works. The companies that are going to benefit from AI are the ones that have the largest amount of data set. That's how AI works. It analyzes data and it improves based off of that. Who's going to have the most amount of miles driven? Waymo? Cruise? Or Tesla? How many people drive a Tesla? A lot of people. 1.8 million vehicles sold last year, right? So if all those miles are being put on, that's a lot of data that's being collected by Tesla. FSD and, and the Tesla uh, autonomous technology, let's just call it that because I'm pretty sure the FSD is, is what they're using in, um, the, uh, uh, in the robo-taxi as well. That's level four, like you said. The level two is what we currently have in the FSD. But the more miles people put on that, the more data AI has to improve its technology and improve the way it drives. So I think the learning curve for Tesla is going to be steeper than the rest of the competition just because they're going to have a lot more data to go on. They're going to have millions of miles uh, driven by consumers. That's, that's my guess, right? I, I think that's to me, logically makes sense. Um, but yeah, anyway... This is this is this is big news. There is this robo taxi thing that's going to be introduced. Well, we'll see. They're saying it's going to be August of this year, and I think he's right. I think Mr. Tom is correct. He's saying that we're not there yet. The, the robo taxis are not going to be rolled out fully uh, this year. The reason why Elon Musk is pushing for that this year in August is because he wants to showcase the technology. Because there's a lot of people out there that are saying, "Well, this is a pipe dream. It's not going to work." And what he wants to do is he wants to showcase it and say, look, look, we're, we're not there yet, but we're very close. We'll keep an eye on that. I thought that was interesting news for uh, for all the Tesla investors out there, uh, like myself. But anyway, I'll catch you guys tomorrow and I uh, hope you have a good one. Thank you. Bye.